Warning, this is not a toy. Misuse, careless use may cause serious injury or death. Eye protection designed specifically for paintball use must be worn by the user and any person within 200 yards. Must be at least 18 years old to purchase, 14 years old to use or operate with adult supervision, or 10 years old to use or operate on paintball fields meeting ASTM standard F1777-97. Read operation manual before using. Some parts shown here may not match the appearance of your parts exactly. This is due to continuous refinements in our products and does not affect the information in this video. This video tour will take you through your Automag standard features, tear down and reassembly as well as basic debugging. Our lovely assistant Tina will be helping us. One of the many optional features available with the Automag RT is a polished, stainless main body. Also available in basic black, the main body adds a custom look to your gun. A new feature on your Automag RT is the high-rise power feed that allows you to sight directly over the top of your gun. The sight rail comes standard on this gun and combines dynamite looks with rugged functionality. The front grip is multifunctional. It includes a built-in replacement filter as well as two air connection ports to customize your air hookup. Multiple air ports are Airgun Design's concept of the gun of the future, where pressure gauges, quick fill adapters, and air-driven accessories will require more air ports than current guns offer. This is one more way that Airgun Designs keeps you ahead of the competition. Your Automag RT has gone hoseless by feeding air through the field strip screw. The special use of dual counter wound springs gives a larger range of velocity adjustment. The Automag RT has a never wear out carbide sear, specially ground to give that custom trigger job feel. And to make that motion smooth as silk, We've mounted it on a roller bearing axle. Well, that's an overview of what's new in parts. Now, let's talk about performance. Due to the high performance nature of this gun, it will not function on CO2. It must be used with compressed air only. If CO2 is used in this gun, it condenses liquid CO2 in the valve chamber, which will result in hot shots and premature failure of the regulator. Your Automag RT recharges at full line pressure through advanced regulator design. The regulator in the Automag RT has been completely redesigned. Through computer analysis of valve timing, flow rates, and the exclusive use of full pressure recharge, your gun is ready to fire at full velocity 20 milliseconds after you release the trigger. This combination of full pressure recharge and high speed regulator gives the most important performance enhancement. The world's first reactive trigger. This main feature of your Automag RT actually pushes your finger back once the gun fires and when fully recharged 20 milliseconds later relaxes the trigger pull to a mere two pounds. This reactive trigger is the most important feature of the gun because it shortens the trigger release time giving you more time to shoot faster. The Auto Mag RT is the fastest shooting paintball marker in the world. It recharges so fast that the gas in the air chamber actually gets hot. When hot gas cools there is a corresponding drop in pressure. When you rapidly fire your RT, the air chamber never has a chance to cool, so the pressure and velocity remain consistent. However, when chronographing your RT, the longer you wait between shots, 
up to a few seconds, the more the air in the chamber will cool, resulting in decreased velocity. Therefore, you must use the following procedure to get an accurate reading of your rapid fire velocity. Set the pressure going into the RT to 700 PSI. Fire a paintball and hold the trigger back. Since the RT does not recharge until the trigger is released, it makes no difference how long you hold the trigger back. Now you are ready to simulate rapid fire. Release the trigger completely and fire the next paintball as quickly as possible, once again holding the trigger back. Once you have determined your current velocity, you may adjust it up or down. Use the supplied Allen wrench to make adjustments. Turn the velocity nut clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease velocity. Repeat this procedure until the desired velocity is reached. More information is available on the chronograph procedure insert that came with your RT. These are the tools needed for complete disassembly. The first step in disassembly is to remove the barrel by twisting it counterclockwise one quarter turn and pulling it firmly out of the main body. The barrel has two O-rings that hold the wire nubbin in place. To replace the nubbin, carefully remove the O-rings. Then, pull out the wire nubbin. To remove the valve body, unscrew the field strip screw and remove it. Note anywhere on the O-rings. Pull and release the trigger to move the on-off pin into the valve body. This action releases the valve body. Remove the bolt and bolt spring as a unit. The valve assembly unscrews into two parts. The back half is called the regulator body while the front half is called the valve body. Remove the regulator seat. Under that is another O-ring. This O-ring prevents the incoming air from affecting the regulator piston. Moving to the back of the regulator body, we find the velocity nut. Unscrew the velocity nut and remove it. There are two counterwound springs that press against the regulator piston. To remove the regulator piston, push it out using the Allen wrench. Since there are no user serviceable parts inside, do not disassemble the regulator piston. Disassembly will void your warranty. Next, remove the power tube tip and for that you can use a coin. The spacer should now fall out. The O-ring tool can now be used to pull out the power tube O-ring. The valve sticks out of the valve body and can be removed by pulling it straight up. The O-rings and spring stack should not be disassembled. 
On the bottom of the valve is the on-off assembly. Pull it out by the edges. In the bottom of the hole is yet another O-ring. Use the O-ring tool to remove this. This is the O-ring to replace if, when holding the trigger back, the gun leaks occasionally down the barrel. The on-off bottom unscrews. Next, remove the pin. The sight rail must be removed before the main body can come off. Unscrew all six screws and remove the sight rail. The frame, rail, and main body are held together with one screw. The grip assembly will now detach from the rail. Turning over the rail, you can easily lift off the main body. The sear is held in by a threaded axle in the side of the rail. Use the supplied Allen wrench and unscrew and remove the axle. The sear should fall out of the bottom of the rail. These are all the user serviceable parts in your gun. Please do not disassemble any other components. Start with the rail and sear. Position the sear and insert the axle. Use the supplied wrench to tighten the axle snug, but don't over tighten. The threads are aluminum and could strip if over tightened. Set the main body in the rail and hold upright. The trigger rod should come out behind the trigger and the frame should seat flat against the rail. Insert the front frame screw and tighten it. Slide the sight rail into position and align the holes. Insert the screws, but don't over tighten them. Remember, they are aluminum threads. The on-off valve assembles easily and the O-rings hold the assembly together. The assembly parts are the on-off top, two O-rings, the on-off bottom, and the on-off pin. Insert the narrow end of the on-off pin into the small O-ring. Next, 
Insert the entire assembly into the on-off top. Now, screw on the on-off bottom. Finish up by pushing the assembly onto the larger O-ring. Slide the entire on-off assembly into the valve body. To finish the valve body assembly, we need to install the power tube tip. The first part to go in is the power tube O-ring. Make sure it's all the way in the bottom of the hole and then insert the spacer. Now install the power tube tip. Use the coin to tighten the power tube tip and then this part of the assembly is finished. Now let's assemble the regulator body. The regulator piston with the O-ring end down goes in first. Then, insert the counterwound springs against the regulator piston. The regulator nut goes last. Tighten until the O-ring is in the regulator body. Many people call the factory because the gun will not gas up after they worked on it because they didn't screw the regulator nut in far enough. On the other end, install the O-ring in its seat first. Place the regulator seat in the hole. The last part to go together is the valve into the valve body. Carefully push the O-ring into the valve into the valve body. Screw the two halves together and align the marks. Slide on the bolt and bolt spring and you are ready to put the valve assembly into the body. The valve slides into the body up to the Z-lock pin. You must align the pin to the Z-lock slot in the main body to fully seat the assembly. The valve will seat with the Z movement. The field strip screw locks the valve in place. Tighten the field strip screw with the supplied wrench. When installing the barrel, slide it in until it stops and then twist it until you find the slot. Once the barrel is aligned with the detent, it will slide further in and then twist into the ball feed position. If you have done everything correctly, the gun will fire. Let's take a look inside your new RT. First, we'll look at how the air flows through the system. This is important in understanding how to maintain and debug your gun. Air from the supply tank enters the RT through the rail and then the field strip screw is shown here. It then enters into the regulator's seat area. It travels past the reg seat into the transfer port forward to the on-off assembly. We are now at the halfway point in the gun. Because the trigger is released, the air will flow around the on-off pin forward into the air chamber and backward into the regulator piston. As the chamber comes up to the set pressure, the regulator piston moves back to limit the flow of air. 
and finally the valve closes, regulating the final pressure in the chamber. The gun is now fully pressurized and ready to fire. Note that the regulator valve is closed and the air pressure downstream in the chamber is regulated to about 450 psi, while the pressure upstream in the field strip screw is the same as the incoming pressure, around 700 psi. Pulling the trigger starts the firing sequence. As the trigger moves back, the sear lifts the on-off pin into the on-off top O-ring. This will cut off the flow of air into the chamber during the shot. Note that the sear has not yet released the bolt to move forward. Now that we have isolated the air chamber from the rest of the gun, we can continue the trigger pull and release the bolt. It now moves forward from the pressure in the chamber, but no air leaks out during this stroke because of the tight fit between the power tube and the power piston in the middle of the bolt. Not until the bolt moves forward enough to load the ball all the way into the chamber does the power piston in the bolt unplug the end of the power tube and release the air behind the ball. The design of the power tube tip is very specific. The taper allows the air to flow out at a controlled rate so it will not build up too much pressure behind the ball and cause the ball to break in the barrel. This was developed exclusively at Air Gun Designs using our specially designed computer gun that has sensors at eight major points in the valve as well as in the barrel. This specific release of air we call the tuned power pulse. This is designed into our entire line of guns. The ball fires out the barrel and the air leaves the chamber. At the same time, the air leaves the regulator piston area and the regulator opens completely, allowing full pressure into the valve up to the top of the on-off pin. This happens almost instantly after the shot and achieves the reactive trigger the gun is named for. Now that the regulator is open, there is 700 psi or twice the pressure on the on-off pin pushing the trigger forward compared to the 450 psi regulated pressure during the pull stroke. This is the most significant development in paintball design in a long time. It helps your finger move back to the start position faster than you can normally react. This for many provides a significant improvement in firing rate. In the early phase of filling the chamber, the regulator is still open and the air is rushing in at 700 psi. As the chamber starts getting closer to its regulated pressure, the regulator piston moves back and closes the valve to limit the final fill to around 450 psi. Once the chamber is filled and the regulator is closed, the gun is ready to fire. The pressure in the transfer port is now regulated to the lower pressure, and this lightens the trigger pull. This offers the best of both worlds. By filling at the fastest possible rate using high pressure, then tapering off to the final target pressure, the fill rate of your RT is fast enough to recharge 26 times a second without shoot down. This completes the cycle of the gun. So now, let's move on to troubleshooting. The most common problem in auto mags is gas leaking. There are only four places where the air is likely to leak from the valve. Each point has a simple test and except for the piston only requires the replacement of an O-ring to cure. To determine if the gas is leaking from number three, put your finger over the velocity adjustment hole. If it stops or changes pitch, the regulator piston is leaking. There is an overpressure vent built into the regulator piston. It is designed to vent air if the regulator malfunctions and too high a pressure enters the air chamber area. The first step to stop the leak is to chronograph your gun and make sure it is below 300 feet per second. If it is, then the piston which has no user serviceable parts has malfunctioned and needs to be replaced. Call Air Gun Designs for a new part. To determine if the leak is in one or four, fire the gun and hold the trigger. This drains the air from one and four. And if the leak stops, you know it's either the power tube O-ring or the on-off bottom O-rings. To determine which, use a squeegee or wooden dowel rod and slide it into the barrel up to the bolt face. 
while the leak can be heard, push on the bolt face. If it changes pitch, lubricate or replace the power tube o-ring at number one. If not, replace the bottom two o-rings in the on-off assembly at number four. In some cases, the gun may not be leaking, but when you fire and hold the trigger, every few seconds a short burst of air is heard coming from the breech. We call this problem the lawn sprinkler and is caused by a leaky on-off top o-ring. To cure this problem, simply replace the top o-ring in the on-off assembly. The last place on the valve that air can leak from is number two. This is a small vent hole in the side of the valve that drains any leaking air from between the two o-rings on the valve stem. If all other tests prove okay, and the gun is still leaking, replace these O-rings, but this should be a rare occurrence. Your Automag RT controls the velocity by regulating pressure, so it follows that most velocity problems are in the regulator, and specifically in the regulator seat. The regulator seat must be clean and free of dirt at all times. If some particle becomes lodged in the seat, it will not seal and the gun will overpressure and leak out the back. If you are having velocity problems, the first thing to do is to clean or replace the regulator seat. To prevent dirt from getting into the seat, we have included a filter in the front grip. It is installed in the elbow before the elbow is screwed into the front grip. This filter will over time become clogged from doing its job. This filter should be replaced about once a year. When a filter goes bad, the velocity will fall off during rapid fire, but this condition comes on slowly. Bolt stick happens when the bolt does not come back far enough to allow the sear to come up and recharge the air chamber. It can be recognized because the trigger does not come forward after the gun is fired. Degassing and recharging the gun resets the bolt and the gun fires normally. This condition has been largely eliminated with the use of a spacer in the power tube. If you encounter bolt stick, you must change the spacer in the gun to a longer one. If your gun continues having problems, please call the factory for assistance. This concludes the debug section of our video. Tech support is available by calling 847-520-7225 between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Before you call, please have your serial number ready and make sure that you have tried to make your Automag RT work without any aftermarket accessories not manufactured by Airgun Designs. Airgun Designs manufactures its own line of quality accessories for your new gun, including custom colors and splash anodizing as well as t-shirts, sweatshirts, and patches. See your dealer or call us for a full-color brochure of our guns and accessories. Or visit our local website at www.airgun.com.